What's up, YouTube? It's Derek, YouTube channel FastFC09. Uh, it's been about two months since my last video. Um, just been busy with other stuff, honestly, man. It's, uh, it's summertime here in North Carolina. It's hot as shit. It's like 90-something degrees every day, stupid levels of, of humidity, really hot, and just kind of getting all geared up um, and sweat my balls off all day in that suit has not been my number one priority. So kind of been in the pool a little bit, um, been to the beach some with my wife and friends, been to some cookouts, just kind of summer type stuff, right? But the weather's starting to get a little cooler. Uh, fall is, is right around the corner, my favorite time to ride. So in the meantime, although I haven't been riding a tremendous amount, I've been getting a few little parts on the bike here and there, some things that I've kind of been procrastinating about that I've been wanting to get and finally have gotten around to it, right? So I got, since my last video, I had my rear sets installed which you guys can check these out. These are driven, driven TT rear sets. Um, I got these from Sport Bike Track Gear. Awesome stuff. Um, this is the stock setting, which is, uh, you can see it's zeroed out. That's where the stock peg would be located. Um, the main benefit to rear sets is just the adjustability that you can get. And the main reason that people get rear sets is it's fixed peg, which means that uh, that right there is not gonna be a folding peg like the stock stuff. And you can raise the peg, you can raise them up and move them back, which is what I did. So my pegs are farther up now and a little bit farther back for increased cornering clearance. The peg is kind of rotated slightly forward. Um, you can adjust that on these rear sets. So mine is kind of tilted a little bit forward to give you a little bit of extra grip when you're weighting the peg. This has been installed. This is a uh, uh, FC09 front sprocket cover that I got from Graves. It's uh, you know billet. It's machined. It looks pretty cool. I don't know if the camera will pick it up. But it's got an engraved FC09 logo. Uh, looks pretty sweet. So that's on there. Coming around this side, I've got a Graves Raider cap put on. I do have the Samco hoses. They've come in. I'll show you guys those in a minute. That's going to replace all this stock stuff. Um, those were I ordered those and they came in from the UK, which is pretty pretty sweet. This is. Uh, the other side, obviously, driven TT rear sets. Um, my rear sets are set up uh, for GP shift, so it's a reverse shifting pattern. A lot of guys run that, personal preference. Um, again, got the rotated peg on this one, a little bit slightly forward to match the opposite side. This I got from Stoltec Moto, I told you guys, is a rear brake reservoir relocation kit. So basically what that does is on the stock setup, the passenger peg will be here, the brake reservoir was mounted connected basically to the rear peg so you were not not able to take the uh, rear passenger peg off without moving the brake reservoir so that's just kind of cleans it up it allows you to drop the passenger peg um so i was able to get that done the throttle tube is installed like i said i don't know if you guys can uh if it'll even pick that up but that's in there that is a um throttle tamer throttle tube that i got from uh uh, G2, G2 is the manufacturer of G2 throttle tamer throttle tube. Um, I will say this, the uh, rear sets, the little bit of seat time that I've got on them, I like them. Um, it's definitely, you can definitely tell that they're higher and farther back, obviously, so it feels a little different than stock, but it corners really well. Um, and I like, I like how they feel, I'm happy with them. And the throttle tube is, uh, you can really notice a transition in it. This bike has had the, uh, the updated, um, 15 this is a 14 and Yamaha changed the settings from the 14 to the 15 as far as the uh, ride by wire setting on the throttle uh, it's a lot smoother on the 15 and up and uh, that cleaned up the jerkiness that the bike had as far as throttle pickup and then the bike's been dyno tuned as well so that cleaned it up even better and then with installing the G2 throttle tamer tube it, it made it it's, it's really smooth now be it from you know a standing start or taking off from a stoplight or um, you know rolling on power when you're actually riding it's a lot smoother so all that is installed i'm tickled to death with it really happy with it and since then the uh the the biggest thing that i got right kind of the it's probably the first thing that most people with this bike get but ironically it's the last thing that i got for whatever reason so i did get upgraded aftermarket suspension right the fc09 the weak link in the bike has always been the suspension. 
Now, is it as bad as what the internet would have you believe or what people on the forums, you know, these guys that, that just kind of recite stuff that they read or they hear, they, they've never even ridden the bike, but they just say, oh, it sucks, it sucks, it's complete shit. Is it, is it, the, is it the best suspension? Hell no. Is it the worst? It's not the worst either. It's, uh, it's kind of budget, budget grade suspension, right? This bike, the chassis is, is phenomenal. Like the bike handles, handles awesome. And then um, the engine is just, it's incredible, man. It, it is probably, it might even be the best street bike motor I've ever ridden as far as just how the power is delivered. It's, uh, it's completely linear. Um, it's an 800 and, you know, right out of 850 cc um, cross plane crankshaft triple cylinder motor from Yamaha. It just makes really linear power. You can you can lug it um, off a corner. You can ride it in the mid range, or if you you know if you want to rev it, it makes it makes power up top too. So it never really falls on its face. It never really falls off. It makes awesome power. Really easy to ride, and I love that. But could the suspension be upgraded? Yes, it could be. I've got 10,000 miles on this bike on the stock stuff. I've ridden in the mountains primarily. I don't really commute a lot. I ride uh, in the mountains on the weekends if you know we're riding. Um, awesome roads, Virginia, Tennessee, North Carolina. Um, that's kind of what I like to do. And then I also you know do track days when I can. So that kind of riding is, you know, it has a different demand on the suspension from uh, from commuting. Obviously, you're you're putting more load on it. You're on the side of the tire. It's working the suspension different. And then you know you're you're braking really hard, you're accelerating really hard. So it's a different different uh, demand requirement on the suspension from just riding the bike to work or riding it to Starbucks or something, you know. So um, a heavier guy like myself, um, I weigh to give you guys a little bit of a background. The stock stuff is really set up for a rider that weighs about 160 to 170 pounds and primarily uses the bike for city riding or just commuting, right? Um, my background, I am, uh, my build, I'm 6'1". I'm right at 200 pounds, give or take. I maintain that weight pretty much year round. I got a semi, I guess a semi-athletic build, I guess. And uh, my wife is a phenomenal cook. My wife is an amazing cook and she can cook her ass off, right? And I'm a guy that likes to eat. So I kind of won the lottery on that sense because I married a woman that loves to cook and loves to feed me. So <laughs> that's kind of a win-win, right? So I pretty much maintain 200 pounds year round. So in gear, by the time I put on leathers, uh, helmet, boots, gloves, back protector, um, 220 to 225. So a heavier guy like myself is greatly gonna benefit from from suspension that is sprung and valved for my weight and for the type of riding that I do, which is, uh, you know, fast paced mountain stuff and, uh, you know, track riding. So that being said, when you choose aftermarket suspension from, I don't care what company you go with, Olin's, Penske, Nitron, um, stuff like JRI, K-Tech, uh, Wilbur's, Batubo, uh, Racetech, anything that you go with aftermarket, it's, it's pretty hard to make a bad decision, right? Like, I don't think one is better than the other. All the suspension companies, aftermarket suspension companies, they all have slightly different, um, I guess, uh, ideas on how the suspension um, should feel as far as what spring weight to use, what, uh, you know, what, what, what oil weight you should run in them, kind of how the suspension works. But the build quality and the value to the customer I mean, you're not gonna make a bad decision, right? Most of the guys that that I ride with, several of them run Olin suspension. Um, years ago, um, I owned, for a little while, I owned a Suzuki GSXR 1000 with a buddy of mine, with Andy. Um, that bike we bought from a race team that had already basically decked the bike out for the track. It was a full, full-blown race bike. It had a Penske triple clicker rear shock a uh, triple adjustment basically, and then it had a, a Penske front fork uh, complete drop-in cartridge kit. So it had some really high dollar shit on it. So I got a little bit of seat time on Penske, right? Um, I went with a different suspension company. Um, I went with K-Tech, right? K-Tech 
the main reason I went with the KTEX shock, they're all, they're all badass, all the companies, like I said, but I went with KTEX solely because all they make is motorcycle shocks, right? They're based, they're based in the UK, um, and they offer two shocks for the FC09 currently. And check it out, man. I got mine, I ordered mine from, from Revzilla. Um, here we go, KTEC, KTEC rear shock. All right, this is what I got. I got a KTEC Razor R light rear shock. Obviously it's for an MT-09. This is just a little note that I had when I was ordering my stuff. Obviously it's a KTEC RCE Razor R light rear shock. Um, heavy valve, basically 200 to 250 pounds in gear. Um, when you order this shock, uh, I got mine from Revzilla. Um, Orient Express is the sole importer for KTEC suspension in the United States. So even though I bought the shock from Revzilla, you know, they, they sourced it out from Orient Express. Uh, when it was delivered to me, it had an Orient Express, uh, you know, label on it. So when you get this shock, you can get it in three uh, spring weights and valve settings. Um, you can get it, order, you can order it at the light setting. There's three, there's the light, which is, I think it's 120 to one, I wanna say like 160 maybe. Then the medium weight is from 160 to 190. Then there's a gap from 190 to 200. And then you can just go with the fat boy size, which is what I ended up getting, uh, which is 200 to 250 pound weight setting. So that's what I got. So when you see it on there, heavy, that's why I got that. You've got uh, three way adjustment for preload, rod height, rebound damping. It's got a 35 mil piston in it, 14 mil low friction piston rod. Um, you know, low friction eyelets, just typical, typical stuff that you would find in an aftermarket shock, right? So this is the one that I got. Pretty pump. This is just owner's manual stuff. Pretty, pretty standard. But yeah, that's it, man. Pretty pumped on it. All uh, KTEX have red springs, like Nitron has teal. Penske and GRI are uh, like navy. Olin's is yellow, but KTEC is, uh, you can identify it by the red spring. Pretty sweet, man. Just the build quality is a huge upgrade. Huge upgrade over stock. Um, now you can get this shock. You can get it like I got it, or you can get it with a uh, remote um, adjuster for like an extra 200 and, what is it, like 250 bucks or something. Um, you can get the upgraded uh, external unit for adjustment. I didn't really need that. This is kind of the setting that I wanted to get. I wanted to keep it as basic as I could. I just wanted to have it sprung. Um, sprung for my weight, sprung for, you know, the type of rotting that I do. So yeah, that's it, man. That's gonna look, it's gonna look awesome on there. I'm really, really pumped on it. But it appeals to me because K-Tech, they solely make, um, solely make motorcycle shocks. Like, like Olin's, I mean, they make some badass stuff. I mean, they make stuff for all kinds of cars, all kinds of bikes. Um, JRI is the same way. They're based in Mooresville, um, about an hour or so from where I live, Race City USA, all the NASCAR teams. They make, you know, they started out making automotive shocks and then transitioned over to bike shocks. Um, Nitron in the UK, they're the same way. Started off making automotive, transitioned over to motorcycle. k -Tech is cool because, or I, I think it's cool because they solely make, solely make motorcycle suspension. So not that that's better or worse. It's just kind of it's just kind of cool, I think. So looking forward to getting this thing mounted up, and uh, when I do, I'll get some seat time on it and uh, give you guys a complete complete uh, assessment and a review about it. Um, so now for the front, right? For the front, I got an Andreani uh, complete front fork cartridge kit pretty sweet part man it's called the masano cartridge um a buddy of mine uh you guys if you watch fc09 stuff you've probably seen him dodge rider dave cool guy man lives in raleigh not too far from me rooted with him a little bit done some track day with him cool guy he had an fc09 and he had andreani cartridge kit the same cartridge kit that i have that i got and uh you guys check out his channel he had some cool videos on that kit um and he recommended it, said it was uh, fantastic. Another buddy uh, of Dave's that I have ridden with a time or two, Vic, if you're watching this. Vic, I saw your video and saw that you had the same kit, so that's cool. But anyway, you guys check this out, man. I got a 
Andriani front four cartridge kit, if I can open this damn thing. I got this from Hard Racing um, down in Mooresville, North Carolina. Like I said, about an hour or so from where I live. Um, pretty standard, man. I got I got heavier springs. I've got 9.5 springs because it's based on it's based on my weight, which, like I said, you know, 225 in gear, so needed something a little heavy. But um, yeah, these things are pretty small. I'm not gonna take them all out right now. Um, I'm gonna get them installed this week. Uh, take them to a race shop to get them put in. But I'm pretty pumped on them, man. I think I think for the money, this is gonna be a phenomenal buy. And Andreani, they are uh, an Italian company. So these are made in Italy. So pretty sweet part. And uh, you know, for there's there's more expensive options you can get. You can get an Olin's 30 mil kit that's around uh, around 1,300 bucks. You can get uh, I know Penske makes a kit, a 25 mil kit that's uh, about the same, about 1,200 bucks. This is significantly less than that. Um, but all the all the stuff that I've watched on YouTube, all the stuff that I've looked at on the forums, um, this is a really top rated kit uh, for the FCO9. And uh, I am absolutely stoked to get these put on. So now I'm gonna have suspension set up for my weight, 225. Um, this valve been set up for my weight, so I'm definitely looking forward to getting that hooked up. Um, I'm gonna be running five weight oil, Olin's in this. This is what um, the guys at Hard Racing down in Mooresville, uh, this is what they recommended. So I'm gonna be running five weight in that. And then this is the uh, Samco hose kit that I got, right? This is pretty sweet. Um, you can get these in red or blue or black. Um, it's an eight piece kit, I believe, made in Britain. Pretty cool part. Um, it's just gonna be, the bike is gonna run uh, a little bit more efficiently as far as the cooling with the Graves cap. I'll be running either engine ice or Evans cooling in it when I get that put on, hopefully this week. And then these hoses are just a little more efficient a lot higher quality than um, than the stock stuff, so looking forward to that. And I just went with red. Um, I was kind of torn, man. I didn't know if I want to go with red or blue. And my wife just said, "Hmm, go with red." So I thought, "Yeah, I go with red." So that's what I got. This I got the uh, clamp kit too. You have an option when you buy stuff from Samco. Um, you can either reuse um, some of the stock clamps, or you can upgrade this. This is kind of expensive. I think this was like. I think it was like 60 bucks just for this right here. Um, but they're smooth um, on the inside. They're specifically built just for um, just for this hose kit. And they're marine grade, you know, corrosion resistant. So um, it's kind of dumb to get the hose hoses and not get the hose kit provided by the same manufacturer. So went ahead and sprung for that and got that. So definitely, definitely looking forward to it. Um, don't know if this is what you guys thought I was going to get or not. Uh, there are there are shocks that you can get um, that have more adjust, adjustment than what I got. Does everybody need that? I don't believe so. I know I don't need it. I just need a shock that's set up. Um, hold on, trip here. A shock that's set up for my weight, set up for my speed, and uh, I think I think I'm going to be stoked with it, man. I think it's going to be awesome. And uh, as always, I'll give you guys an honest assessment, an honest review um, on what I think. And looking forward to getting them put on, find an awesome setting for me, and just stick with it. I'm not a guy that changes my setting a lot. Like um, on a street bike, on a dirt bike, um, it, once I find a, a suspension setting that, that I like and I feel good with, I pretty much stick to it. I've got some buddies, um, that you know are in my core riding group that are really good at setup like um my buddy lindsey phenomenal mechanic lindsey's got you know several different bikes and uh he's pretty good at being able to determine you know kind of what a bike is doing and set up accordingly to make it better um my buddy troy is the same way phenomenal mechanic um troy rides dirt and street he's really good at um you know, determining what's a good setup. So I got a good group of guys around me that I could say, hey, the bike feels like this, the bike's doing that. And uh, they can ride it and kind of help me dial in a setting that I feel good with and confident on. So I'll probably probably get some opinions as far as um, what settings feel good for me. But once I find a setting I like, I stick with it. But I'm pretty, pretty pumped, man. 
aftermarket suspension on the FC09. That's kind of the last big deal I want to make. The only other thing I might get on it is possibly a quick shifter down the road. Um, other than that, the bike will pretty much be done. It's uh, pretty much pretty much good to go for the kind of riding that, that, that I like to do. And um, so yeah, I, I got suspension. Probably a lot of y'all probably thought, man, this guy's never gonna fucking get it, but I finally got it. Looking forward to get it put on. So the next video that I post, um, hopefully within the next week or two, the suspension will be on. I have a little seat time on it. I'll give you guys an honest, honest rundown on uh, what I think. So yeah, hope you guys like the video. Uh, hit me up in the comments, give me some feedback, and uh, look forward to uh, interacting with you guys again. I hadn't really done a lot of videos lately just due to time, but uh, hopefully my schedule is going to allow me to do a little bit more than I've been doing. So um, definitely looking forward to it. So you guys, thanks for watching, and uh, let me know what you think. Later.